So I'm at the OTT TV World Summit with Nagu from Tata Alexi. Nagu, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you delivered an excellent uh, keynote yesterday looking at quality of experience. Can you tell me a little bit about the main points of it? Yes, of course. So most often what happens is quality of experience is often seen as a lagging indicator or, or in fact has been set up as a lagging indicator, right? People doesn't know even the problems before it occurs. People always come to know about it only after it occurs. So the time to address these problems is often very delayed. And by then, your customer would have moved away from one operator to the other operator or one provider to other operator. So what you've been trying to see is, is there a way of understanding quality of experience as a leading indicator, even before the quality of experience has been affecting the end customer for that? That's exactly the main point which we're talking about, right? So how do we do this, right? There are different ways in which this can be done. One way is to look at the predictive analytics aspect. There's this amount of data which comes in. Other is to set up a lab much before itself, which enables, addresses all possibilities of QoE issues and try to fix those issues even before it. Traditionally, this has been done with the development teams. Now with the DevOps coming into picture, we are trying to understand, address, can it be done using something called a self-heal mechanism? So automatically, even before the end customer sees the problem, can this be fixed? That's, that's exactly what we are trying to address using a solution called Falcon Eye, Falcon Eye monitoring and automation. So where do you start? What are the challenges in that? It's, the key challenge is people often see monitoring as a statistic or analytics. Often in a siloed organization, in an organization it's always seen as a silo by an operations team. Whereas the fix has to be provided by the development team, not by the operational team, and owned by the product manager or the strategy teams. So these silos is often seen as a major problem because people often say, okay, monitoring, I have a problem which has been set up but nobody tries to fix the problem even before it occurs. That's amazing. The silos within the organization is a key challenge which we see from an operational perspective. On the technical perspective, what happens is because of the number of devices which is out there in which people are consuming the content, it could be an Android, it could be an iOS, it could be set of boxes, it could be an Xbox, PS4, People can't test and validate even before it goes on in that particular scale. So that's where our solution is trying to address these challenges as well. The diversity of devices which can be addressed much effectively in a, in a lab and, and simulated all possible solutions much before it hits your market. So who is it, you know, you, you mentioned that, that kind of need for a kind of cultural shift in organizations, you know, and, and often you see uh, kind of quality experience seen as more of a marketing statistic than you do with an actual yes. kind of physical mechanism or process within a business. What, what cultural change is needed within businesses to, to kind of take on a product like yours? Right, so uh, very often what happens is most of these organizations which has been streaming video comes from the telcos world, which has been traditionally operating, okay, set it, everything runs well. Or from a broadcast perspective, set it, everything works well. But today's new media world is much more different. And just like the customers are leaning forward to look at things, and development teams as well as has to be looking forward into the customer's eyesights and doing things. So enabling the product manager is one of the key aspects which we often tell the customers. Enable your product manager. Often the product manager is a tick box assignment in these companies, but if you can enable them with the right set of statistics, enable them to question rest of the teams, that's the key first step you get into. Second is to owning up video quality, or accepting video quality of experience as an issue, and have an organization which owns up that part of it. You have development organizations, you have testing organizations, you have um, CDOs and CTOs coming into picture. There is no CQOs or a quality of a video. End of the day, we are in a business of delivering video and there is nobody who owns up the quality of the video aspect of it. So we often say that bring that culture into senior management which can trickle down easily into the rest of the organization. That's the kind of shift which we are looking at. And in fact, Companies like Comcast and Sky has been pioneering this aspect, bringing in teams which is video performance teams or video performance improvement teams for that matter. So they've already started that route. If the rest of the world can start going into that world, it's much more easier. And then finally, what's your elevator pitch? What puts your product above other people's? So proactively identify and assess quality of experience issues even before the, these, those occurs can reduce a lot and lot of money which you would be sending on CDN unnecessarily. That's, that's a key, key message. Brilliant, again. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.